Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh and in today's lecture we will be covering two types of polymorphism. One is compile time and second is runtime polymorphism. So now starting with the definition, in the polymorphism, poly means many and morphism means form. So it is kind of ability of method or object to take different form as per requirement. This definition will make you more sense when we will come to the practical of different types of polymorphism. Now polymorphism is of two type compile time that is static polymorphism. In this method to be called is decided at compile time only. Now method overloading is example of uh, compile type polymorphism. Now, so let us see the example of it. So now in this example what I have is we have three methods with same name sharing same name within this class. One is get discount, second is get discount with two parameters. One is price and second is percentage. Now the fixed method is returning 50 as a value. Now second method what it is doing it is calculating the percentage from the price uh, and returning that value and then third method it is just returning a string value but the common thing is all three are of same name. Now this is a kind of uh, functional overloading you also can say now in the polymorphism static polymorphism uh, when we are calling uh, like now we have i have just uh, declared this object and now i am calling the methods now at the compile time compiler know that which method it points to now if i try to call this again now it will tell me like which method it is calling to so this is all done at compile time it is nothing which compiler will be uh, not aware of uh, during the compile time. So it is no, a compiler do know like which method it will be calling at compile time. So now this is what compile time or static polymorphism is. Now coming to the second example that is runtime. Now from the name itself you can guess like the call will be dynamic. So at the runtime only the uh, like the dot net uh, framework will know like which method it has to call. Now the call to overriding function decided at runtime it is achieved using inheritance and overriding. I have prepared one example of it. Now let us see uh, in this example I have an interface. Uh, now one thing I want to make clear is I will not go into the details what is the interface and how to implement it. For that you can check my different lecture. Now coming to the interface. Now in this interface I have made one method that is get rank which is returning some skill. Uh, string value. Now what I did is I created three classes. One is CLS India, CLS USA and CLS Canada which all three are implementing same interface means they are def uh, giving definition to interface method uh, like abstract method which is de uh, like defined in uh, interface. Now all three are having definition of this get uh, rank method and returning some sort of string. Now the only thing which is common between all three classes is they all share common interface. Now for the example what I did is I just created one list of interface and in this list I have added three classes three uh, like uh, three objects of th these three classes. Now as these all three classes are implementing same interface so they can, uh, like this interface list can refer to the uh, like this ob these objects. Now if I go to the definition where like what I am doing is after looping through each of the object of the list I am calling the get rank method if I go for the definition it will go to the interface because at compile time only thing which is clear to the compiler is like it will call some method get rank of any class which is implementing this interface. So it is just pointing toward this interface itself instead of going toward any uh, uh, any class. At runtime only it will be able to aware of like which method it will be calling. So let us see. Now first my list is empty. Now I am adding three objects of different classes. CLS India, CLS Canada and CS USA. Now with each object, now at run a uh, compile time it was pointing toward the interface. Now the object is of CLS India. Now if we will go, it will go into the get rank of CLS India. Now for the second object it will go for CLS Canada get rank method and so on for the CLS USA. So at the runtime only it is uh, the dot uh, is aware of like which method it has to call and again I if I go for the definition it will again point me to the interface. So at runtime everything is decided like which method it has to call. So this is implementation of runtime polymorphism. I think I have made uh, clear with both of the example what is compile time and runtime polymorphism is. 
but still if you have any question you can contact me through my email id by my skype id and my phone number and my website my email id is yogesh.mahalat.gmail i will be happy to help your question so one more thing uh, polymorphism is one of the important questions when it comes to the oops uh, in dotnet interviews so do prepare of uh, it and uh, I think this lecture will clear you about what the question can come is like uh, what types of polymorphism how to implement runtime polymorphism and all so you can make clear of from this video so even if still you have some question you can uh, just contact me okay keep learning stay healthy be happy